Tom Farmer's Journeyman by the Brothers Grimm. A certain tailor had a son who happened to be small and no bigger than a thumb, and on this account he was always called Tom Thumb. He had, however, some courage in him, and said to his father, Father, I must and I will go out into the world. That's right, my son, said the old man, and took a long darning needle and made a knob <laughs> and made a knob of sealing wax on it at the candle. And there is a sword for thee to take with thee on the way. The little tailor wanted to have one more meal with them. And hopped into the kitchen to see what his lady mother had cooked for the last time. It was, however, just dished up, and the dish stood on the fire. Then he said, Mother, what is there to eat today? See for thyself, said his mother. So Tom Thumb jumped up on the hearth on the hearth and peeped into the dish. But as he stretched his neck in too far, the steam from the food caught hold of him and carried him up the chimney. He rode about in the air on the steam for a while until at length he sank down to the ground again. Now the little tailor was outside in the wide world, and he travelled about, and went to a master in his craft. The food was not good enough for him. Mistress, if you give us no better food, said Tom Tom, I will go away, and early tomorrow morning I will write with George on the door of your house. Too many potatoes, do little me farewell, Mr. Potato King. This would thou have forsooth grasshopper. What would thou what wouldst thou have forsooth grasshopper? says the mistress, and grew angry and seized the and seized the dishcloth and was just going to strike him, but my little tailor crept nimbly under a thimble, peeped out from beneath it, and put his tongue out at the mistress. She took up a thimble, thimble and wanted to get hold of him, but little Tom Thumb hopped into the club, and while the mistress was opening it out and looking for him, he got into a crevice on the table. Oh, ho, lady, L lady mistress, cried he, and thrust his head out. And when he began to strike, and when she began to strike him, he leapt down into the drawer. At last, however, she caught him and drove him out of the house. The little tailor journeyed and came to a great forest, where he fell in with a band of robbers who had a design to steal the king's treasure. When they saw the little tailor, they thought, a little fellow like that can creep through a keyhole and serve a tickler to us. Hello, cried one of them. Thou giant Goliath, wilt thou Go to the treasure chamber with us. Thou canst slip thyself in throughout the money and throw out the money. Tom Fum reflected a while and at length said yes and went with them to the treasure chamber. Then he looked at the doors above and below to see if there was any crack in them. It was not long before he espied one 
which was broad enough to let him in. He was therefore about to get in at once. But one of the two sentries who stood before the door observed him and said to the other, What an ugly spider is, what an ugly spider is creeping there, I will kill it. Let the poor creature alone, said the other, it has done me no harm. Then Tom Tom got safely through the crevice into the treasure chamber opened the window beneath which the robbers were standing and threw them out one fella after another. When the little tailor was in the full swing of his work, he heard the king coming to inspect his treasure chamber and swept hastily into a hiding place. The king noticed that several solid tailors were missing, but could not conceive who would have stolen them, for locks and bolts were in good condition, and all seemed well guarded. Then he went away, and said to the sentry, Be on the watch, someone is after the money. When therefore Tom Tom recommended his labour, they heard the money moving and the sound of clink, clink, clink. They ran swiftly in to seize the thief. But the little tailor who heard them coming was still swifter and leapt into a corner and covered himself with a tailor so that nothing could be seen of him. And at the same time, he knocked the sentries and cried, Here am I. The sentries ran thither, but as they got there, he had already hopped into another corner under a tailor and was crying, Oh, oh, here am I. The watchman sprang there in haste, but Tom Thumb had, no, had long ago got into a third corner and was crying, Ho oh, ho! Oh, here am I! And thus he made fools of them and drove them so long around about the treasure chamber that they were weary, or that they were weary, and went away. Then by degrees, he threw all the tailors out, dispatching the last with all his might, then hopped nimbly upon it, and flew down with it through the window. The robbers paid him the great compliment. Thou art a valiant hero, said they. Wilt thou be our wilt thou be our captain? Don Tom, however, declined and said he wanted to see the world burn. They now divided the booty, but the little tailor only asked for a cruiser because he could not carry any because he could not carry more. Then he once more buckled on his sword and bade the robbers goodbye. And took, to, and took to the road. First he went to work with some masters, but he had no liking for that, and at last he hired himself as manservant at an inn. The maids, however, could not endure him, for he saw all they did secretly without their seeing him, and he told and he told their master and mistress that they had taken off the plate, what they had taken off the plate. And 
carried away out of the cellar for themselves. Then said they, Wait, and we will pay thee off, and arrange with each other to pay him, to play him a trick. Soon afterwards, when one of the maids came mowing in the garden, was mowing in the garden, and saw Tom Thumb jumping about and sweeping up and down the plant, she moved him up and quickly with the grass, tied in a little grey cloth, and secretly threw it to the ground. Now among them, there was a great black one who swallowed him down without hurting him. Down below, however, it pleased him ill, for it was quite dark, neither was any candle burning. When the cow was being milked, he cried, Strip, strap, stroll! Will the pail soon be full? But the noise of the milking prevented his being understood. After this, the master of the house came into the cow blear and said, That cow shall be killed tomorrow. Then Tom Thumb was so alarmed that he cried out in a clear voice, Let me out first, for I am shut up inside her. The master heard that quite well, but did not know from whence the voice came. Where art thou? asked he. In the black one, answered Tom Thumb. But the master did not understand what that meant and went out. Next morning the cow was killed. Happily Tom Thumb did not meet with one blow at the cutting up and chopping. He got among the sausage meat. And when the butcher came in and began his work, he cried out with all his might, Don't chop too deep, don't chop too deep, I am amongst it. No one heard this because of the noise of the chopping man. Now poor Tom Tom was in trouble, but trouble sharpened the wit, and he sprang out so adroitly between the blows, that none of them touched him, and he escaped with his whole skin. But still he could not get away. There was nothing for it but to let himself be thrust into a black pudding with the bits of bacon. His quarters there were rather confined, and besides that, he was hung up in the chimney to be smoked. And there time did bang terribly heavy on his hand. At length in winter he was taken down again, as the black pudding had to be set before a guest. When the hostess was cutting it in slices, he took care not to stretch out his head too far, lest a bit of it should be cut off. At last he saw his opportunity, cleared a passage for himself, and jumped out. The little tailor, however, would not stay any longer in the house, where he fared so ill, so at once he set out on his journey again. But his liberty did not last long. In the open country he met with a fox who snapped him up in a fit of absence. Hello, Mr. Fox, cried the little tailor. It is I who am sticking in your throat. Set me at liberty again. Thou art right, answered the fox. Thou art next to nothing to me. But if thou wilt promise me the fowls in my father's yard, in my father's yard, I will let thee go. With all my heart, replied Tom Thumb. Thou shalt have all the fox and hens, as I promised thee. Then the fox let him go again, and 
himself cried in the home. When the father once more saw his dear son, he willingly gave the fox all the fowls which he had. For his, for this, I likewise bring me a handsome bit of money, said Tom Thumb, and gave his father the cruiser he had earned on his travels. But why did the fox get the poor chicken to me? Oh, you goose, you father would surely love it. Your father would surely love his soul far more than the fowl in the yard. And so ends the story, Tom Thumb as journeyman. Join me again next time as I read Bitch's Bird. Until then, take care.